My name is Todd Crane. I'm a senior scientist with the Sustainable Livestock Systems Group. And my role in the project is leading a suite of different research projects related to climate change adaptation. So we're starting by looking at what are people doing, how does that work, who are the innovators in, uh, in these uh, livestock systems, what are the innovative practices that they've been working on, how do those work, how have they come about. Uh, that will have a, another layer of research that tries to identify some practices that we can, we can do field trials of so that we can do our analyses of them as researchers, the, the soil impacts, the biophysical properties and characteristics, but also the social dimensions of it, um, profitability, labor, that kind of thing. Uh, with an eye toward being able to make well-informed advice about targeting technological interventions for climate change adaptation. Uh, so not just the technology itself, but the, the, the social space around it that, that, that makes it happen. Um, there's an, another project that's looking at adaptation tracking. There's quite well-developed protocols and methods for measuring reporting and verifying greenhouse gas emissions, but the equivalent for tracking adaptation is very underdeveloped, especially for livestock systems. Uh, and finally, I'm co-supervising, well, I'm co-supervising a project uh, that's looking at the science policy interface along with uh, one of the other PIs, Philip Thornton. Um, so how is research picked up in policy discussions? Uh, what are the institutional incentives and sometimes barriers for letting science inform policy, what are some of the scientific barriers that we can communicate our findings better. And another very interesting PhD project on the political economy of adaptation. This is going to do kind of a socially differentiated analysis to see who are the households, who are the people that are adapting, are able to pick up on new technologies and identify who are the people that are struggling to do that so that we can again do better targeting of adaptation interventions and we can also anticipate the, the, the parts of the population who might struggle even to pick up on those to talk about that in advance so we have good planning on that rather than scratching our heads after it starts to happen. So through all of across this suite of projects we have several kind of higher order objectives. And by the end of this, we want to be able to analyze practices according to their mitigation potential and their adaptation potential at the same time. So get those indicators to start to overlap with each other, find out where they synergize, find out where they differ. Um, again, so we can make better targeting for adaptation interventions and also potentially start to explore some of the trade-offs because there are some adaptation practices that might make uh, greenhouse gas emissions worse. Um, and we need the language and we need the data, we need the frameworks that enable us to talk about those trade-offs. In addition to adaptation mitigation trade-offs, we also want to develop a base of evidence that enables us to talk about potential trade-offs between socioeconomic targets, development targets, and these uh, kind of global environmental targets of uh, lower emission development. First of all, in the climate change and agriculture and development world, livestock have for a long time now been uh, given a second seat. This project is interesting because it's finally bringing those two uh, topics into discussion with each other in a very immediate sense. Previously, all of our work as projects have either been on mitigation or on adaptation, what few there have been. So now we're, we're bringing them into direct discussion with each other, and I think that's important. Uh, we're also bringing together um, social and biophysical and environmental analysis into one frame, which I think is really important. We often tend to look at one or the other, um, but every technical change is a social change, and we need to look at this in a holistic fashion. And finally, I think it's, it's very timely because um, national governments across Africa and other parts of the world are have been asking for more attention to climate change adaptation and, and, and are getting more sensitized to the need to invest in agriculture from a climate change lens, both adaptation and in terms of lowering emissions. 
so this is fulfilling a, a very concrete and immediate demand by national governments, but also by producers themselves who are, they're not anticipating climate change, they're experiencing the pinch now. So this is uh, fulfilling a, a very timely need in that sense. What I find most exciting about this project is that it has so many different components. Uh, it, it's got the environmental science, it's got the social science, it's got the policy engagement, it's got the, uh, the, the producer engagement. So we're working on technologies for producers, but we're also working on um, institutional strengthening to promote more effective policy making and investment and interventions. This is a really ambitious project because it has, as we've been saying, so many moving parts, many different elements of environmental science, many different aspects of social science, producer engagement, participatory assessment of technologies, uh, engagement with policymakers uh, at the national sphere, but also indeed engagement with some uh, policies and investment priorities in international discourses. And it's it just it captures so many of the different elements that, uh, well, it's going to keep us on our toes for the several years to come. This, this is what makes it exciting.